Let's head down to Canberra now and catch up with One Nation leader Pauline Hanson. Thanks for joining us again, Pauline. We're going to be crushed for time once again. I've got to get your thoughts on what's <laughs> happening in state politics in Queensland with uh, this uh, fracas around yeah. Deb Frecklington and Clive Palmer's influence on the LNP executive. You'd be licking your chops, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, I'm not, actually. One Nation will not be government in Queensland, but we need a strong opposition leader, and I don't believe that we're getting that with Deb Frecklington. The trouble is you'll only get good government if you do have good opposition, and I think this is the problem. They're not hearing from her. She's not putting cross policies, what she's going to do for Queensland and how she's going to counteract Palaszczuk. Queensland could not stand another four years with Palaszczuk. Um, she's destroying the state and I think is, this is where the concern is. The only way they can actually do it, the LNP, is to work with One Nation, give us preferences in some seats that we will pick up and be in coalition with us. Chief, is that, the they're preferencing the Greens Nichols. in one seat. Who do you think should lead the LNP? Yeah. Um, look, it, that's not my choice. That's up to the party's choice. But, but what I'd say is we're not hearing strong policies from Deb Frecklington. She's not getting it out, what she's going to do for Queensland. And this is, what they're, this is why they're so nervous about it. All right. Now, I want to play you something that uh, you said on this program last week and we didn't have time to discuss. Here it is. So people are ju jumping on the bandwagon and calling themselves Indigenous to get the handouts. Oh, typical, uh, pa typical Pauline Hanson, just it's when atrocious. we're running out of time, you throw a big bomb in there. I've got no time <laughs> to debate that with you now. Pauline Hanson, that was you last week. Now, this takes me back to 1996 when you were kicked out of the Liberal Party. Uh, uh, there are issues here sure to be discussed, but you were saying that people are feigning Aboriginality to get access to government payments. Yep. Isn't this back down this it horrible is. old divisive path that you've been down so many times before? No, it's not, Chris. You know, right from the very beginning, I've called for equality, and you give it that helping hand to someone who desperately, desperately needs that helping hand. It should not be based on race. Now, under our Constitution, Section 51 of 26 of the Constitution, it states the government can make, make specific laws for any race, for the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. What I'm saying is, just because of the colour of your skin and the race you are does not mean that you don't need that helping hand. So when I have families who are not Aboriginal living in cars or can't get housing or their kids can't get the education that they require and, they, and the helping hand, I, I've... You know, I just feel that we are heading down the wrong path and a division is happening in our country. But in that's 1971, a our census so, was 100... Sorry, Pauline. No, that's it's a not. That's a You're different wrong. argument. It's one thing to say that there shouldn't be separate policies uh, having additional welfare measures uh, for Indigenous Australians. You just say treat everyone the same and everyone has access to the same, uh, the, the same services or welfare. But you're saying that people are feigning... Indigeneity to get access to those welfare yeah. payments, which correct, oh. it is it's correct because what people are doing there's the definition across the government departments is you can self-identify as being an Aboriginal, you can be accepted by elders of a community that they will actually write a letter and say they accept you as being Aboriginal. So that is not good enough. So there's real no definition to Aboriginality. So in 1971, when we had the first census, there was approximately 116,000. That has now increased 459% up to 700 and 98,400 people identifying as Aboriginal. So this is the case. One fellow wrote to me, he said, look, I'm an islander, I came here to Australia, I applied for a job, couldn't get it. He said, then I applied for it, Aboriginal need only apply. He said, when they asked me for identification, I told them I was from the stolen generation, I didn't have paperwork, so they gave me the job anyway. But so you there's need an example. to actually look the, at that. There's, look, the, the, there's yep. no... There's, the, people uh, are happy and proud to... Proclaim their indigeneity. Uh, that's certainly changed over time and populations have grown. And as you say, people uh, can actually yeah. focus and apply for various grants and programs. But that's a, that's a huge leap. I think then to say that people no, are pretending, uh, uh, unless you want to sorry. detail this bloke's uh, yeah. name and address and we can check that out, because that shouldn't happen, obviously. It should not happen. It shouldn't happen. Chris, it shouldn't be on based on what is your race or your culture. It should be based on a means test. Are you or do you need that helping hand? Like you have AB study and Oz study. Like 
you can get a lot of different, whether it's be the master's degree, you get travelling allowance, you get rent allowance, you get living away from home, you get that through ab study. All study doesn't get it. Ab study starts at an early age, all yep. study uh, starts no, no, we at understand 25. This. There's understand big differences. There are, di now, there are definitely there are specific programs, yep. I understand that, but I wanted to pick you up on that other point. And uh, we are out of time again, Pauline Hanson. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Pauline Hanson, the leader of One Nation, Senator Pauline Hanson, live from Canberra.